Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and time to talk about unusual FRB signals once again, because it looks like we've discovered another one that seems to be extremely difficult to explain. Or essentially, another unusual radio signal coming from really far away, that though quite certainly is not coming from some kind of an alien civilization, and is quite certainly natural in its origin, currently has absolutely no explanation. And also seems to be coming from some mysterious source. And so let's discuss this in more detail, starting with like a one minute summary of what we know so far about these bizarre signals. The signals that actually happen several times per day, with potentially thousands of signals visible from the night skies within a 24 hour period, but only discovered in 2007. And that's because every single one of these signals is super super short. Here's actually one detected from our galaxy a few years back, and it's extremely easy to miss this. They only last for a few milliseconds. But in that super short period of time, they're able to produce more energy than our sun does in approximately one year. And because so much energy is emitted in just a fraction of a second, this is one of the main reasons why they're so mysterious. But as you might have learned from one of the previous videos in the description, the biggest culprit right now is, very likely, some kind of a magnetar. A young and highly magnetized neutron star whose origin is technically also a bit of a mystery. But in a lot of different studies, more and more evidence seems to suggest that magnetars represent the best possible explanation. It's actually not entirely clear what exactly happens on these magnetars to cause these emissions, but as you might have learned from one of the previous videos, one explanation is some kind of a collision on the surface of a magnetar, or maybe a transition inside magnetar from, for example, neutrons to a notion made entirely out of strange quarks. In other words, um, we don't know. But, because many of these signals seem to come from some kind of a really small point, no more than 20 kilometers across, and also extremely magnetized point, magnetars are still the best explanation. For example, we know that in the Milky Way galaxy, this location is known for a magnetar as well. But when it comes to FRBs, there's actually a bit of a distinction between them. Some of them only happen once. Other ones seem to repeat. And it's the repeating FRBs that seem to present us with the best chance to explain what's going on. Mostly because by detecting exactly where they're coming from, we can then pinpoint the exact location in the galaxy where they're coming from, and then use statistical analysis to determine what's most likely to exist there, and what can actually produce these signals. So for example, if they're coming from the center of the galaxy, maybe this is all a result of a supermassive black hole. If this is coming from some kind of a molecular cloud, or maybe a galactic arm, where we expect a lot of star activity and a lot of supernova, this could be a magnetar for sure, or at least some kind of a magnetized neutron star. But if they're coming from some kind of an ancient galaxy that doesn't actually have a lot of star activity, or maybe even coming from outside of the galaxy, now that's a different question, because in that case we don't really have a good explanation. And though in the past most of the FRBs have actually been traced to a lot of regions where we expect star activity, and thus magnetars were still the best explanation, in the last video you can find any description, we actually discussed the detection from the galactic halo, or basically from a region where we don't really expect anything, except for maybe a few old stars. But this new detection is even stranger. It's actually coming from a study right here from 2023, where 25 repeating FRBs were discovered by the Canadian telescope known as CHIME, or um, CHIME. Even after all these years, I still have no idea how to pronounce it. And while one of these FRBs detected in 2019, a repeating FRB was actually traced to a somewhat empty spot. Or essentially was traced to somewhere where initial observations discovered absolutely nothing. Which was a pretty big problem because here we really don't expect any magnetars or actually any activity whatsoever. And moreover, it was also super far away. And even right now, it's one of the farthest FRBs ever discovered. It traveled to planet Earth for approximately 7 billion years, so it came from a redshift of 1. So there was always a bit of an uncertainty in terms of its exact location. But because it came from such a faraway distance, it did actually take a while to figure out exactly from where. But because this was a repeated FRB, over the years scientists improved the accuracy of the location, confirming that it indeed seems to be completely empty space. Which obviously did not make a lot of sense. And so for several years now, researchers were trying to figure out what's actually happening with this FRB, and if this is some kind of an anomaly, or something really bizarre and something really unusual. Well, it turns out that it is bizarre, but it did not come from nowhere. Because the study by Dante Hewitt and the international team right here, finally discovered that it did come from a galaxy, an extremely dim galaxy, super far away. 
and a galaxy that was invisible for one simple reason. It's a very small dwarf galaxy that doesn't actually seem to contain much inside. But here's exactly how all of this was achieved and of course what this means. First, scientists wanted to confirm the radio location. And so here they observed the burst for approximately 66 hours, catching it twice in the process. And once they knew where the radio location was, they used one of the most powerful optical telescopes, the Grand Telescopio Canarius, in order to conduct an extremely deep sky observation just to see if maybe there is something here after all. And though at first there was indeed nothing, eventually they saw an extremely small patch. The patch visible right there inside the green arrow. And here this seems to represent the smallest galaxy in the area, which is also probably one of the farthest dwarf galaxies we've ever seen. And so this FRB also definitely came from inside the galaxy as well. But there's obviously one major problem. Finding a magnetar in a dwarf galaxy that's so dim is actually kind of unusual. And that's because most magnetars and of course most FRBs have usually been traced back to somewhat active massive galaxies. Yet in this case, this galaxy seems to be the least massive and the most dim discovered so far to produce some kind of an FRB. Although here there's also a side note. So as I mentioned previously, some FRBs only happen once, other ones seem to repeat. And turns out that repeated FRBs, for some reason, have been traced to dwarf galaxies in the past as well. As a matter of fact, for some reason, more repeating FRBs come from dwarf galaxies compared to non-repeating FRBs. Which potentially suggests that maybe something inside these dwarf galaxies seems to encourage these repeated FRBs compared to non-repeated ones. And while well, here one of the main explanations can actually be possibly seen near us, near the Milky Way. Because some dwarf galaxies, like the Large Magellanic Cloud, are known to contain a lot of supermassive stars. As a matter of fact, the most massive star we've ever seen is inside Large Magellanic Cloud. On top of this, some of the other records, including the star largest by size, was also in the Large Magellanic Cloud until relatively recently. And that star we've discussed recently because it might go supernova relatively soon. The video about this should be in the description. But basically, because we know Large Magellanic Cloud contains a lot of massive stars, and many of them do create very powerful supernova, there is maybe a chance that they also produce slightly different magnetars, which then end up producing repeated FRBs. In other words, even though this galaxy is approximately 100 times dimmer than most other galaxies responsible for FRBs, it doesn't mean that it's inactive. Actually, it can be super active, especially if it experienced a lot of collisions or some kind of a tidal disruption, which is actually what happened to the Large Magellanic Cloud. It was tidally disrupted by the Milky Way. And so the overall result from the study suggests that dwarf galaxies might actually be conductive to the production of fast radio bursts, at least the ones that are more active and produce a lot of signals. But it also suggests that some of the other detections where researchers could not identify the exact galaxy might have also actually come from barely visible dwarf galaxies that could be detected if we used a more powerful telescope. And so the study basically links these repeated FRBs to remnants from extremely massive stars. And more importantly suggests that we definitely have to do an optical telescope follow-up where the exact source or the exact galaxy could not be seen at first. We basically just need a bigger telescope. But at least for now, this is still just a hypothesis and there's no exact explanation that applies to all FRBs or explanation that seems to basically satisfy everyone. For all we know, these signals are caused by something entirely different depending on the galaxy. And for all we know, maybe this is actually an entirely different phenomenon that we just don't have an explanation for yet. But we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional studies or additional explanations or once researchers discover something else. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.